You see, every day of your life, you're involved in spiritual and emotional warfare. You're either going to win or lose. You're either going to live in despair or you're going to live with a shout of victory upon your lips. We've got to know who our enemy is. And we've got to learn to fight. We've got to learn to win. Turn with us in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. Very familiar scriptures, but read along with me. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, so that ye may be able to stand against the wiles, the tricks, the deceptions of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, so that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, Then stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked." And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In case you did not realize it, we, as born-again believers and followers of Christ, we are involved in a cataclysmic struggle, a battle for the heart and for the soul of America a battle that will either be won or lost. And to the winner will go our children and our grandchildren and the future of America will be determined by how this battle winds up. You know, Jesus called us to fight. He called us to put on the whole armor of God. He said, take up your cross and follow me. He called us to engagement. You know, there's no place for neutrality in the kingdom of God. Jesus said, he that is not for me is against me. He said, if you're lukewarm, if you're halfway in and holding on to the fence, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. There is no neutrality. You can't say, well, it sounds good. Let me, let me just decide later because to not decide is to make a decision. You're either in for God or you're not. And God is calling us to get involved today. He is calling us to a place of sacrifice. If you haven't noticed, American society is rotting to the very core and we are quickly plunging into the depths of darkness and God is calling for His church to be the light of the world, to be the salt, to take a stand, to put on the whole armor of God and to say we are more than conquerors through Christ. Amen. Amen. You might say, well, why are some Christians constantly weak, constantly being defeated, always in crisis? And why do some Christians seem to have continued success? Well, I think the answer is found in Ephesians 6. If you put on the whole armor of God, 
then and only then can you be victorious. Only then can you have the destiny that God has intended for your life. You see, every day of your life you're involved in spiritual and emotional warfare. You're either going to win or lose. You're either going to live in despair or you're going to live with a shout of victory upon your lips. We've got to know who our enemy is. And we've got to learn to fight. We've got to learn to win. I believe God is calling us, and this has been going on now for a couple of months, but I believe God has stirred something up within our hearts, and God is calling us to another level, to a new dimension, to a new place where God can use us in ways He's never used us before. I believe the call of God is going out. But we need to remember first that the church is pictured as a victorious army. In the New Testament, the church was a family. We are a family. We were pictured as a temple, as the bride of Christ. But the last picture of the church in the New Testament is as a victorious army, marching from victory to victory. And if we're going to survive the darkness of the last days, we've got to put on the whole armor of God. We've got to get involved in the battle. We've got to be willing to bleed a little, get muddy a little bit, and say, by God's grace, we are conquerors through Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I think Paul sounded like a George Patton to me. I don't know if you've ever read much about Patton. What a character. What a character. Paul sounded like Patton. He said, fight the good fight of faith. He said, endure hardship as a good soldier of the cross. You know, the church today, I, and I, I, don't mean to, I don't mean to be critical, but when I read the magazines and I go to the church growth conferences, they all tell me, they say, now, what everybody wants to hear is something positive. Said, so you got to make everybody feel good when they come to church. You got to, when they leave, they got to feel good about themselves so they want to come back. If you want the big crowds, make them feel good. You know, give them something. Tell them, I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say everybody's okay. The Bible says there's a broad way that leads to destruction and most people are on that road. And there's a narrow way that leads to heaven and few there be that find it. My responsibility is not to numbers. My responsibility is to God to tell the truth and to warn people of the things that are coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We want to hear all those good things. We want the seats to be comfortable. We want the temperature just right. We don't want to have to walk from down the street a ways. We want to be able to park at the door. You know, my dad, my dad missed out on World War II, thank the Lord, he, when, when he got out of high school, he wasn't really old enough, but I think he fudged on his age. World War II was just about to wind up, closing days of World War II, and he uh, fudged about his age because he wanted to be a U.S. Marine. And he joined the Marine Corps right out of high school. And to sit and talk with him about it is very interesting because he said he went to a place called Paris Island. Has anybody ever been there or maybe you've heard of it? He said he, that, that next morning when he woke up, he thought he had died and gone to hell. <laughs> he really, he said at 4 a.m. in the morning, some guy came through with a trash can and a big metal spoon banging the trash can and saying, get up, get up. And he's thinking it's 4 a.m. in the morning. We don't get up this time. 
And he said, we did more work between then and breakfast than I did in most days. <laughs> and he said, if that wasn't bad enough, the next morning at 2 a.m., they did the same thing and said, we decided to get up and take a run tonight. And he's like, a run? We just worked all day. He said he'd never had ill will toward anybody in his life. But if he could have got his hands on that drill instructor, he would have been violent. But you know what? The Marines were not there to make him feel good. They weren't there to tell him, oh, you're handsome, you're a young man. They wanted to transform him into a lean, mean, fighting machine. And he was transformed into a U.S. Marine. Well, look at what they did. They taught him sacrifice. They taught him to sacrifice their time, their rights. Nobody went up to the drill instructor and said, now I want to talk about my rights. <laughs> that would have been a big mistake. They said, you learn to sacrifice your time and your rights. You belong to me. Now, wait a minute. Hang on one second. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. He said, you belong to me. You were bought with a price, with the precious blood of the Lamb of God. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Christ Oh, and I want to tell you, the Marines were taught obedience. They were taught obedience. When they were given an order, they didn't say, that doesn't make any sense to me, drill sergeant. I mean, who would do that? When they were given an order, they were taught, you respond, and you respond right now, and you don't question. Did you know the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice? Did you know at the wedding of Cana, Mary said, whatever he says unto you, do it. Obey. And I want to tell you, in the Christian life, uh, there is a place where whether we understand, whether it makes sense, we are to obey the Word of God and follow the voice of God and leave the results in His hands. The Marines... We're taught to overcome, to grow, to overcome obstacles, to grow in confidence and strength. God causes us to face obstacles, to overcome them, to reach above them. He doesn't want us to be just complacent and satisfied. He wants us to learn the confidence of having faced the challenge and overcome. When David went to fight Goliath, he said, I've already fought a lion and a bear, and I've overcome them, and God will give me this giant as well. God wants you to overcome a lion and a bear in your life so that when Goliath comes, you can say, my God is able to deliver me. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Marines were taught loyalty. They defended one another. They loved one another. Whether they were white, black, Hispanic, Asian, it didn't matter. They were a U.S. Marine and they loved one another and they defended one another. I want to tell you, the church of Jesus Christ is one family. Whether we're black, white, Asian, Hispanic, we are one family. And he said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The church is not a country club for the religious. It's not where we come and relax and celebrate and have a good time. It's a recruiting center for the army of the living God. You see, the tragedy, the tragedy is that the situation around us is desperate, but the church is not. 
I mean, the situation is more than desperate. But we're not. The call is going out today from God. And in my spirit, in my spirit, I believe we're living in the very last days, the closing moments of time. I believe the rapture could be at any moment. It may be next year, the year after, but I believe it's close. And I believe the spirit of God in these last days is sounding a call and calling us to enlistment and to stand up and to let our voice be heard and to intercede for a lost and dying world and believe that nothing is impossible with God. I believe there's a call going out. Folks, we're, the, the Marines in World War II, they didn't call them up and say, could you guys all get on the beach in California and, and, and y'all just make sure nobody attacks California. That's not what they asked the Marines to do. They said, we want you to go to Iwo Jima, Guadalcanal, the Philippines, Japan. We want you to attack the enemy on their own soil and go and win the battle. And that's what God is calling us to do this day. We're called to attack. He says, in the gates of hell shall not prevail against the mighty marching army of the living God. He said to Timothy, This charge I give unto you, that you might war a good warfare. If you listen, you can hear the clashing of weapons of two kingdoms. Victory is our purpose. Victory is our goal. And victory is ours in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe God. Secondly, an army is designed to fight. There's no protection for the back. Did you notice that? No protection for your back. He said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world and gone back. Orpha kissed Naomi and said, I love you, Naomi. I hate to leave you, but I'm going back. How many people have come to church, kissed the Lord and turned around and gone back? I mean, really? Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. People just, oh, I love you, Lord. But they turn around and they go home. God is calling people to take a stand. Not to negotiate with the enemy. Pharaoh tried to negotiate. That's another sermon, another time. Pharaoh said, why don't you leave your children here and y'all go? He said, no. He said, I got a plan. Why don't you go with your children, leave your cattle and your herds here? They said, no. And Pharaoh kept coming up and said, look, let's work a deal. And Moses said, no, I won't compromise. You're going to let... Not one hoof is going to be left behind because God is delivering us from your clutches and we've got to say to Satan, we're not going to negotiate. We're not going to back down. We're going to claim victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe we've got the scripture, Revelations 19.11. What is the picture of Jesus in the New Testament? Oh, they want to say, well, Jesus was meek and mild. He was lowly. What does Revelation say? There was a white horse. He that sat upon him was faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and he makes war. I want to tell you, I believe they're getting the horse ready right now. I believe he's ready to mount and to come. And I believe he's going to judge the darkness and the spiritual wickedness in high places. And God is going to bring an ultimate defeat to the darkness of this world. And he's called us to be a part of that army that comes with him to victory. He said, for this purpose, I believe it's 1 John 3 and 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. 
He came, why? To destroy the works of Satan. What does Satan want to do? He wants to rob, steal, kill, destroy, bring havoc to your marriage, havoc to your children, steal your grandchildren, steal your peace, steal your joy. And God has come to destroy the works of Satan. That's why he came. He said, I've come to destroy the works of Satan. Oh, I want to tell you, I want to tell you, we need to put on the whole armor of God. Now, let me just tell you that, you know, I've heard those people say, well, when I got saved, I got all of God. Well, let me tell you something. Well, that's, I don't want to go too far on that subject, but let me just tell you. Paul said, who is to put on the whole armor of God? Did he say Jesus needs to go put on the whole armor of God? No, he said, you put on the whole armor of God. But I thought I got everything when I believed in Christ and received Him. No, he said, you go put it on. He said, you, this is an active thing. You've got to put it on yourself. It's the applied word of God to your life. It protects the mind, the heart, the soul, the body. It's something that you have to do for yourself. Jesus doesn't do everything for you. Jesus doesn't go out and pray in your place. He doesn't give in your place. He doesn't witness in your place. He doesn't do all these. He said, you put on the whole armor of God. It's time for us to get up and say, I'm going to put on the whole armor armor of God and I'm going to be a soldier of the cross and I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be defeated. We need to stand like Winston Churchill and look at Satan and say we're going to fight you on the beaches. We're going to fight you on the land. We're going to fight you on the sea. We're going to fight you in the air and we're never, never, never going to give in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, what about, what about some of these weapons? What about the sword of the Spirit? The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. When Satan attacks, use your sword. When Satan brings fear... Speak the word. Second Timothy, I believe it's 1 and 7, says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. He's not given us over to fear. He has given us power and boldness. The Bible says, Be bold and courageous, for the Lord is on your side. He said, Let God arise. And let his enemies be scattered, for we are more than conqueror through Christ. When Satan says you're defeated, he he tells me that. He may not tell anybody else that. Maybe you're all too spiritual. But Satan comes to me and says, you're defeated. And I have to look at him and say, greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. He does. He tells me, he lies to me all the time. When sickness comes, he says, you'll never be well again. We need to look at him and say, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He sent his word and he healed them and he raised them up. When financial cares come, we can say, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in heaven When Satan says you've sinned too deeply, there's no hope. We can say if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Bible compares the tongue to the rudder of a large ship. You can read that in James chapter 3. What are you saying? What do you say? Did you know what the Bible says? It says... 
That ship is massive, huge. But it says a tiny rudder will determine the direction of that ship and where it goes. And it says the tongue is just like that rudder and it will determine the direction of your life and where you're going. I heard a song on the radio. It's one of the contemporary songs. It says, speak life. Speak life. We need to speak life. We need to speak hope. We need to speak the power of God. We need to look at the giants and say, you will fall before me. You know, David did. David walked down the hill and he wasn't thinking, oh Lord, God help me. Oh Lord, God help me. He wasn't thinking that. He wasn't whispering. He wasn't meditating. You know what David did? He spoke out the words. He looked at the giant and he said, you come to me with a sword and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God who will deliver you into my hand. He spoke it out. You know, it's time for us to begin to speak the word of God to the giants in our life uh, and to claim the victory according to God's precious word. Amen. Let me just tell you, we're fighting a battle. If you don't put on the, you don't put on the whole armor of God, you're going to lose. I mean, I'm just going to tell you the truth. You're going to lose. Paul said, put on the whole armor. Get the sword. Speak the word. Take the shield of faith. Put on the helmet of salvation and the hope of God. I believe it was Edmund Burke who said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. The only thing necessary for America to go down the tubes is for the church to wring our hands and say, isn't this terrible? Oh, it's horrible. We're seeing our country slide into the darkness. Folks, it's time to stop wringing our hands. It's time to stop lamenting our decay. It's time to stand up, put on the whole armor of God, get the sword of the Spirit, and say we're going to claim the victory that belongs to us through Jesus Christ. When he said nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you.